Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. The little cupcake. Little cupcake pudding. The cupcake pudding. Or not a bar. Not a bar. Not a bar. Not a bar. Pudding. Not a bar. Pudding. Not a bar. Pudding. Not a bar. Pudding. The little cupcake, little cupcake, little cupcake, little cupcake pudding, pudding, little cupcake pudding, little cupcake pudding, little cupcake, little cupcake, little cupcake, little cupcake pudding, little cupcake. Without pudding, without vanilla, to get back to the of Definitely wanting to probably prove everyone wrong. Now, Randy, you were a superstar receiver that was traded during your career. How do you think AV handled this whole situation? Well, I just think, you know, the era of the social media, how it played out in the media, where all the finger pointing was in Antonio Brown. I think it was a double-edged sword because it was, you know, we as fans, we as the football fans wanted to know what was going on, what A.B. is doing, but at the same time, the way he was going about it, we understand that the National Football League the is Mass a Jack, multi-billion dollar business, so I think there was just a lot of different avenues that he went down that we're not used to, but when you see how strong... Uh, how he was talking in his interviews, you know, I spoke to him over the last 48 hours, you know, he was just talking positive, so I just think that a lot of nerves have really set in for Antonio Brown uh, in the last 48 hours for him to relax now. Uh, he had a little bit of uncertainty over the last couple of weeks, over the last couple of months, but I think now he has a team that he can just settle down, get to work, and him and Derek Hart go make some magic. And you mentioned you spoke to him, Antonio Brown. What else did he... I think it's just more of, you know, how how he felt, you know, leaving Pittsburgh, you know, how the, you know, the bad, you know, cases in everybody's mouth thinking that he's a bad guy, that he's a bad player. But I think that over the over the last month, how uh, things played out, A.B. just wanted to really tell his side of the story. And that is something, uh, like I said, we as football fans is not used to, something we're not accustomed to. You have the number one wide receiver in the National Football League. We know what he's able to do. And then all of a sudden, at the end of the season, you know, all hell breaks loose. So, like I said, it's just something that we're not used to seeing, something that we're not used to hearing. But I think that Pittsburgh, you know, got what they wanted, got A.B. out. A.B. found a home. So now A.B. can just get back to playing football and just being the dominant receiver that we know he is. And he is going to be paired up now with Raiders quarterback Derek Carr and head coach John Gruden. How do you think that dynamic will work? Well, just listen to, that. Just listen to how excited Coach Gruden is. You know, he's a, a very offensive-minded coach. And one thing that really stood out to me just listening to Coach is how he's going to be able to uh, move Antonio Brown around. I think when, when, when I'm at work Sunday and Monday countdown, you always hear me talking about making a defense find a wide receiver. Well, now, you know, John Gruden has stated that Antonio Brown can run every route in the route tree. There's nowhere on the field that he cannot score from. So I just think that him pairing up with Derek Carr, knowing that he can run every route and every route tree, that he's going to be uh, in multiple wide receiver packages. So I'm excited to see you know, what type of route Antonio Brown's going to be running and, you know, what type of numbers him and Derek Carr are going to be able to put up. Derek Carr is still young. Uh, he's, he's been across, uh, you know, he's been to the Pro Bowl. So I think there's a lot of, of, of great things, you know, that can happen. And the one thing that I'll leave you with, you know, Antonio Brown, you know, Coach Gruden has said he's one of the hardest, hardest if not the hardest working, you know, player in football. So, like I said, Derek Carr is getting a hungry, determined player, and I'm I'm very excited to see uh, see what the outcome is going to look like. Yeah, we're all definitely <laughs> hooked. All eyes on the Raiders moving forward. Randy, thank you so much for the insight. All right, thank you.
All right, so this trade bringing lots of optimism to the Raiders, who haven't had a wide receiver with a 1,200-yard season since Jerry Rice in 2002. The only team that has had a longer job is the Ravens, who haven't had a receiver do it since their first season of existence in 1996. Antonio Brown, meanwhile, had six straight seasons with 1,200 receiving yards, tied for the second longest streak in NFL history. Going to the rematch, number three, UNC hosting number four, Duke. Twelfth time these two teams have met, while both run for the top five. Boy, Williams getting the crowd hyped. There, they're hyped. Duke without Zion Williamson for the fifth straight game. Scary moment on the first uh, for Duke. UNC in transition. Marquise Bolden blocks the shot, but hits that stanchion hard, and he's hurt. Had to be helped off the court. Duke losing another big man against Carolina. Kobe White is a for UNC in the second half. Let the vanilla pudding. Suspicious item has been detected. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla pudding. Vanilla bar. Vanilla bar. Vanilla bar. Vanilla bar. Pudding. With a cupcake. With a cupcake. With a cupcake. With a cupcake. Pudding. Yippee. And, uh, yeah. Shame on him for doing that. We, we, we just shouldn't have done that. Will you tell him that? <laughs> yeah. uh, not a bar. Not a bar. Pudding. Cupcake. Cupcake. Pudding. Uh, vanilla. Vanilla pudding. Yippee. Uh, 